Welcome, Raoul. I'm really looking forward to speaking to you today because I know you're very much a diversity and belonging advocate. I have to say also, I am personally really inspired by the presentations that you've made on the importance of belonging at different conferences. One of them was at the Lead Dev, I believe. So I cannot wait to discuss this with you in more detail. It's such an important topic. And thanks for the invitation. It's really great to, to talk to you about this topic. It would be great if you could please share a little bit about yourself and also why diversity, inclusion, belonging is important to you. So before like, we start, I just wanted to say out loud a note that I'm not a specialist in DIB. There are like, a lot of professionals. I'm just like, as I said, like someone that's passionate and like an engineer manager uh, working on Spotify. And I think that the IND can, can really change a lot of things. So. Yeah, but let's go for the introduction. So my name is Raul, I'm an EM at Spotify. I've been there for like almost five years. I started as an engineer, then I became an engineer manager. And then why the IND became such an important thing for me, it's uh, in my previous experiences at like other jobs, I, I there was always like a piece of myself that I could not bring in. For example, in very homophobic countries, as unfortunately Brazil, my home country, I couldn't bring my side of like as a gay man or like some countries that um, it wasn't very welcoming for like a immigrants also I couldn't be explicit and let them proud about that side of myself when I came to Sweden um, and working at Spotify it's a company that really really uh, like has a huge focus on the IND I really felt that I could bring all of myself and then I, I felt as well that I, because of that, because I was accepted in all different uh, layers of, of my own, I could fully focus on my work and then I could unlock my full potential because all my mental health that I was using before about thinking what I could share, what I couldn't share, that mental burden has gone and then I could solely focus on my work and then help my, my engineers and, and the organization as well. I'm so pleased that you found an environment where you can be your, your true self. And it must have just been so exhausting, worrying what I can and can't say, not feeling like you could be your true self. Yeah, it must have been really tough for you. Definitely. And, uh, and then that's not only my case, right? I see the same for different historically minoritized groups. Because it comes in so many different angles, right? Diversity. There's mm. so many different layers. Yeah. Um, so thank you for addressing yeah. that, Raul. So what do you feel are the benefits of having an environment where you have diversity, inclusion and belonging in the workplace? I know you mentioned your own personal experience, but what other examples could you share where you've seen the true impact? That is a very strong business case of like, uh, you know, improving, like improving the innovation of teams, things like that. Uh, this is very valid. I think that when you bring the business case of diversity, inclusion and belonging to the table, but also we should not forget the other things that the IND brings as well. Like uh, it brings a very like a, a long life for the organization, right? And also sustainability of practices of the culture of an organization. I usually say that there's three aspects like diversity, including belonging. So focus on diversity, it's about people from different minoritized groups, right? Inclusion and then like diversity can be very, very clearly, uh, you can have numbers for that. Uh, inclusion, it's, it's also very tangible. You can also express that through processes, you know, and then you can follow up on the process. And then belonging is something that's at least tangible aspect of that all and has also a huge impact on that. I think that all of those are connected. Definitely, you cannot like, it's very hard to split them. But like, especially talking about belonging, when you feel like uh, that, that the team member it's, it belongs to, when they feel that they belong to a team, I find the productivity goes really high and they really feel inspired to do the work themselves and then really drive changes in the organization for the good and also changes on, in their selves. So I, I think that's innovation is an important aspect. Of course, and then this is going to lead to different um, uh, uh, like, uh, as I said, like business case, uh, but also we should not forget the well-being that also this brings to the table when it comes to, to our engineers as well. I'm, I'm, as, as an EM, I feel very responsible for the well-being of each individual of my team and also 
the organization, of course. And then this is one aspect that I believe that the IB really helps. It's improving the mental health of the individuals as well. Now more than ever, with everything going on in the world, the uncertainties, the craziness, to know that you can yeah. come to work to a safe space where you can be your true self, where you feel like you belong. That also has such a, a positive impact, I think, in these current times with everything that mm. we have. You mentioned some of your own experiences, the negative impact of being in an environment that lacked D, I and B. What other examples could you share of that, maybe that you'd seen firsthand as well, the negative effects? When you're creating products, right, that did not, uh, some, some people of that specific, like one specific minoritized groups, minoritized groups not part of it, most likely are going to miss their perspective on the problem. And then if you really want your product to be like uh, widely used by anyone in this world, of course, you have to pay attention to that as well. So in terms of the business case, yes, it helps a lot to have like a very diverse background, like a very diverse team to help you with that. Not only that, right? Like you can have a very diverse team, but you also have to make sure that they will be, their, their ideas, their opinions will be listened and considered. Mm -hmm. So that comes to the aspect of inclusion and belonging. Mm -hmm. So I've seen like it through the industry and it was very famous cases of, you know, face recognition that, that do not work well with like black people, like algorithms or like products that try to do that and then it doesn't work. That's definitely one thing. And, and then like talking more about my perspective as an EM, when they see that it, that doesn't work, usually people feel frustrated for not having that at work, for, for not being part of a process, for not being listened. And then eventually they're going to shut down, right? They're not going to share their ideas and then productivity will decrease a lot. So there is also this negative impact that I see very like, uh, it's interesting as an EM, I, I keep looking around and then having one to ones with my engineers every week. And I can see the frustrations when we have lack of diversity and no inclusion and no belonging as well. We always keep trying, that's funny, like sometimes that with companies, they don't look for that, they don't have their, in their culture, that in their culture, they keep looking for something, right, to explain what's happening with the uh, productivity, with why people are not feeling well, like why they are not like progressing. And, and actually, it's very clear, it's, it's just because you are not considered the I and B in your organization. I can certainly relate to some of that being in an environment where I was the only female for over a year and a half as well. So firsthand, I experienced and saw the negative effects that it does have in terms of productivity, ideas exchange, things like that. What did you personally learn from this experience, from what you've seen, and how are you ensuring that you're making a change? As an EM, I have some more mandate of the processes of the team, and they can contribute to that, pointing out when we don't see the inclusion aspect of that or not. I realize sometimes that don't think that every, everything is fine. You know, if you have someone that's like, if you def, let's say there is one, only one woman in your team. So I learned that you should engage into conversations. You should try to normalize the conversation around the I and B and explicitly ask them, hey, how, how you feel like in the team? Do you feel that? your voice is heard? Do you feel that your ideas are out there and everyone can see that? Do you, do you feel that you have this space? So I think that like, uh, uh, I learned that we, we have to be very explicit about it. I think that we should not underestimate, we should not expect that eventually those things will come up. Yeah. You will have to take an active, uh, especially as an EM, you have to take an active action on that and really ask that, like really look to improve the situation more and more, because it's far from good uh, when we talk about women in tech. Yeah. It's like, we have a lot of work to do. And that's, that's my point. Like we know, we all know that we have a lot of work to do. So we have to have these conversations as much as we can. Yeah. I, I really like that Raul, because I think that being proactive Raising awareness is so important on these topics. Everybody knows that we need to get more women in technology. We need to get more historically and minoritized groups into tech, but not enough of us, I guess, are putting the action in. So 
constantly having these conversations, asking questions, not just acting on assumption, right? Mm. Exactly, yeah. So how else have you amplified the voices as a manager when it comes to women and historically minoritized groups in your organization? Good question. I, I constantly I constantly check about the unconscious bias that I have with myself. So that's daily, right? Like before I go to an interview, uh, before I have a one-to-one, before I go to like a large meeting, things like that, or like or a meeting that, or a brainstorm, because it's hard to remove the bias, but we can control it. Like we, we have tools to like uh, know why we're having that specific behavior. So I access my behavior and my, my unconscious bias daily. Another one is I also want to make sure that like uh, we have this representation in different forums. In terms of inclusion, I, I try also every time that we establish a process and then there is a facilitation a role there for retros, for someone that's going to represent the team in like a status update meetings, things like that. I also make sure that we have rotations so that it's not always the strongest voice that we take this spot to represent the team. We make sure that everyone is going to have the same chance to be there representing the team and learning more. Also interviews as well with candidates. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit picky on that because in the sense of, let's imagine that someone's applying for a job in the company I'm working now, and then I get the list of people that's going to interview. And then if you have only male uh, interviewers for like a female candidate, of course, this is not a good, a good like uh, experience, right? Like this is the first contact we're having with the company, like in how are you going to see yourself isolated it's like oh i'm not part of that group because i don't see myself in that group so also like i i, I try to make sure that candidates also they have a good experience they feel they feel belong they feel themselves there as well it's like kind of a mirror when i have a one-to-one with my familiar colleagues i positively reinforce good behaviors of those members because unfortunately the words like for the same behavior you have different words. Mm. When when a man and like in tech, when a man is like pushy, you know, bossy, you are going to tell, oh, he has a goal. He's like a very good at management. He has everything strict. And then when it's a woman, usually like, oh no, she's so bossy. Usually using negative words with that. So I I also like uh, pay attention to the words and then reinforce positive behaviors. And also every time that I see an event that someone should join to develop their skills, I always like bring that to, to my premier colleagues and engineers and then like, hey, you should apply for that. This is like, it's going to make your career. Uh, it's going to give you a lot of good tools for improvement of your career. It's so inspiring to genuinely see that you're always having this awareness and always trying to give people the platform to progress in their career, because I think that's really important as well. Sometimes we hold ourselves back, typically as women, mm. out of fear of rejection, from confidence. So we need that push sometimes, and it's mm. great that you're doing that. You mentioned unconscious bias. This is something that I speak about so often with individuals when it comes to diversity, inclusion topics. What advice can you share for overcoming the unconscious bias or just working on improving it? First, accept the fact that you have it. <laughs> it's not bad. Like, it's not bad to say, hey, I know that I have unconscious bias because sometimes it's out of your control. It's like part of the culture or part of the, the way that you were raised, right? Um, but definitely try to uh, point out the, the, those bias that's very uh, uh, clear to you. And then before you go to, you can you, you, you can start by doing like two very specific meetings, for example, interviews, one-to-one, those are like one-to-one -one contact, right? And then those, those maybe because you know who you were talking to specifically, you, you can be, and then sometimes for example, in an interview, you know, even like the, the questions you're going to ask, right? So you can be very specific about what should I say here? And then keep asking yourself, if I was interviewing a male candidate, what was the question that would make me uh, feel uh, confident about the candidate? And then like have those things written. In the beginning, I, I found myself creating some scripts like so that I could know I'm taking this decision because I wrote it before and I accessed my unconscious bias. And this is the, uh, 
the answer that I'm expecting, no matter the, where the candidate comes from, no matter like uh, their gender and so on. So uh, this is a very important one. And the second one uh, th th that helps helps me a lot is to understand the struggles that those female uh, engineers, like women in tech, they go through. Because when you understand the, the hard times that they face in tech, you're going to understand sometimes why, for example, as I say, they don't feel sometimes like female, we, we have some, uh, there are like a lot of uh, research saying that, yes, unfortunately, female candidates, they don't feel as confident as male candidates. So then you have also to understand those behaviors that like uh, women have in tech because of like how it is, like unfortunately how it is right now. And then you have to work to make those things not happen again. Actually, we have to feel everyone empowered and like confident to apply to any kind of job, to any kind of role. And then um, that's uh, how, how I, I try to access my behavior. With that in mind, the topic of having that confidence as well, as a manager, how do you ensure that your employees can voice a contrast in opinion without that fear of getting negative consequences or being shut down by someone? Step number zero is to build trust. Yeah. So not only trust between uh, me and the person, but also among the peers of the team. And then there are like some exercise, you can like do this journey, like life journey to share a little bit more of each one. And uh, uh, eventually also you go to a step further and then you start to exercise feedback among the peers so that they get to know a little bit more of each other and then they see where is the environment that they are right now, right? So ground, we, we build from trust. And then, as I said, like make sure that the strongest voice is not the dominant one, right? Sometimes if someone is speaking, can, usually it's like a male, like, uh, but you have to make sure that everyone has the same power there. Everyone has the same chance to speak out. So if, if you don't give this chance to someone, if you only, it's only one person talking, 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 nobody else will feel empowered to say anything, right? Once also like, it, like you can see that I'm doing like steps and then the next step after that to make sure that like everyone feels that they can talk about it, it's to encourage them sharing their ideas. So in the beginning, when a team is forming, I always like to be around when they are talking about whatever is happening, because it might have some conflict and then I have to step in to kind of find like a mirror ground and then to make sure that they are using the uh, proper words and then people are like finding like a, a way together. And once, uh, once this happens, like uh, with, uh, when I have like, I try to have like once to ones with them every week. And then in that one-to-one, -one, we're going to work, uh, as I said before, I'm going to reinforce the behaviors, right? Like the good behaviors, like, no, what you said, like, was very great. I think that wasn't a problem at all. And then like dive into the idea. Oh yeah, but we didn't have time to go deeper into that. Can you explain me more? And then when they see that they're really engaged, they understand what they they want to say. Next, I also in the same meeting, I say like, hey, next time, present that again. I understand much better your idea now, present, and I'm with you. I can also step in and help you to explain, but like, go ahead. It's a very nice idea. I feel that actually challenging ideas, if done the right way, is good for progression, for growth, for learning as well. If everyone is just saying yes all of the time, where does the innovation come from, right? Where does the growth come from? So delivering it in the right way, giving people a voice, building trust, all elements to find yeah. a place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you say are the obstacles that you faced around the I and B topics? Yeah, I have to, one of the top, it's, uh, the thing of preaching to the choir, right? When you're talking about D, I, and B, usually it's just the minoritized groups that are together moving forward to make the changes. And then uh, I'm going to, yes, like uh, it's, we're going to talk to each other, like women, black people, you know, BIPOC, uh, LGBTQ+, all together saying like, yes, we have to improve the I, and B. But the, the, like, uh, straight 
uh, straight white cis male variable, you know, like uh, they, they are not going to, most of the times, like they are not engaged in those conversations. Mm -hmm. So this is a, like a, a, a very big challenge, I think that's like, how do we make sure that other groups, they are also part of, of this. So uh, is our conversation, like what, what you mentioned in this conversation that we're having right now, how do we engage men into this transformation that we want to do to have more women in tech and then making them feel good, making them feel that they belong in tech as well, right? Mm. So this is one. Uh, the second one is how do we make this, this is my now my, my EM, my engineer mindset. How do we make the delivery of this? How do we make, how do we scale up this? Yeah. Right, right. So we are like, a, how, considering that this is a project, how we make sure that we're following up on the metrics, mm. how we are making sure that we're following up on the improvements and that then actually we can hold people accountable for that. And the same as we do in software projects, right? Mm. So we have been uh, trying different things, but I'm open to hear more about that if someone has any tip, uh, yeah. What things have worked for you when it comes to working on these topics? In the term of like uh, impact and delivery of that, it's uh, you, I don't know what your organization uses for like defining those, but let's say that you use OKRs, like key values, right? And then you define OKRs for like a quarter or like a specific time. I think I have seen that's very helpful when you define KRs for the I and B. Mm -hmm. right and then you follow up on those metrics it can be about the, the diversity it can be about inclusion and belonging mental health you can you should definitely do like also an engineering approach like a business oriented approach for that because those things usually are very abstract right like you talk about belonging yeah you feel belonging but well actually those, that area has improved so much in terms of business oriented practices that today we have tools for that. You can measure uh, inclusion, you can measure the uh, belonging uh, in terms of metrics. So bringing that aspect of engineering to that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to preaching to the choir, um, there was a, a conversation, like the first time I was presented to a allyship, the, the term allyship was an inclusion summit that we have at Spotify in 2019 in New York. And then there was Kenji Yoshino. He's a professor in like university in the US. And then he, he presented to us uh, the idea of allyship. It was like a allyship from the to all. And it was very interesting. Um, this is like one thing that I recommend you to see. So I think that allyship is a key for moving away from this preaching to the choir uh, thing, right? It's also, you're going to also get, you're going to benefit yourself as a cis male, a white cis male, by also helping the other groups, right? Because eventually, it was funny, like, it was interesting that they talk, because eventually you're going to be in one of the groups that's going to need also help. Like, for example, parents, right? Like, it's also one group that we usually don't talk about, but hey, like, uh, um, sometimes uh, in my team, I, I try not to have like meetings too early or too late, yeah. Big, like late in the afternoon because it's the time where people are like picking up the kids at school, right? And then especially in the pandemic now, people are taking care of their kids at home. It's very, very challenging. So uh, eventually we all will become old. And then also, you know, like all of those groups are not favored groups, like historic minoritized groups. And then uh, the allyship is, he said like, once that allyship is like insurance that you are contributing to every day, every day. Yeah, we all will be in these different diversity brackets at some point, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's important yeah. to consider every angle. And I know in your current company, you're doing a lot on the well-being, the welfare, mental health, as well as advocating belonging and inclusion. What other initiatives have you seen to help promote DIMB further? Things that I have tried and then I have seen like very good uh, impact is participating in events that's directed to those groups, like uh, so, like uh, women in tech, uh, you know, they're like uh, some for very interesting forums 
go through that to see their perspective, to see what's happening in, in, in there, to see the efforts, and also to see the, the cases that you can get inspiration from. So definitely uh, I should go for that. Also, one thing is bring those people to the spotlight. Whenever you have a chance to bring any member, like a female colleague to a talk or some space that you have conquered already, bring them in. So let's say you have been invited to the same conference over and over again. And then because they know your work, uh, it's like, uh, and then usually you, you invest time in like making nice, you know, proposals for that. So when you get like one spot, bring one female to talk with you about a, like something in tech. So bring those ones in, in, to, to, the, to the spotlight because I, I really believe in the power of representation. When I see someone that has the same profile, like uh, the same uh, background as I do, the same community that I'm from, I really feel inspired. I, I believe that I can do more. I, can, I believe that I can be there. And that's the same for every like other community. I, I believe that's the same for women, like uh, those young girls that they see you know, mathematicians or like big engineers and other women uh, driving huge projects in tech for NASA, you know, like things, big things that they really feel inspired and they, they believe in themselves. I think that's like how we can also improve that. And um, there was also other ones. It's, um, we also did like a, a, a very cool one that I learned a lot myself, I have to admit. It was a book, book club called Bias Equalizers. We did inside Spotify and still happening. So we we wanted like I started that with a colleague, and we were very annoyed because there was like some book clubs outside the company or inside the company that was always bring the same perspective, right? Like it was usually like a cis male straight author talking about the same kind of uh, characters in the book. So then we, we brought that from different perspectives, different writers, women like black women, trans women, like very different uh, people. And I learned a lot. I, I really learned a lot about other communities. I think that like a lot of this mindset of allyship for all, it came exactly from reading and getting to know more about their struggles, about their life experiences, right? You have to put yourself in their shoes. And that's yeah. something that you touched on earlier as well. And it's really is a powerful tool for you to become a better ally. That is so important. Thank you for sharing some great initiatives, Ro. I actually think I saw you make a presentation with your female colleague, um, Android developer, I believe. Yeah, yeah, Ellie, yeah. Yeah, it was a really great talk and really refreshing to see that there was a woman as well speaking with you. So it's great that you're pushing that forward. Moving yeah. forwards, then, what would you say are your top tips for creating a safe space to allow people to bring their best selves to work? Get to know a little bit more about them. Make them feel com comfortable about sharing a little bit about themselves so that you can, okay, I see that you like coffee. That's like a very generic <laughs> uh, uh, kind, but like, like oh, have you heard about the coffee group that we have here that you can go and talk about coffee? But also, of course, things that you can see right away. If it's a woman, uh, if you have like a community, like an internal community that talks and that get, gives support to each other, let them know that there is such a community mm. and then they are welcome for that, right? As soon as I joined Spotify, like the second week, uh, another a colleague, she's also Brazilian, she invited me to the spectrum, like this, this LGBTQ plus group. I, I apps like the very, the second week already, I got carried away. I got so happy to see that there was such a community there inside the company that could support me. So try to find that, try to make them feel home, try to make them realize that they're not alone. And they're like, uh, they're, uh, they're people going through the same life experiences as they are. Uh, mental health groups, different groups, right? That you can be part of it. Also, whenever you, you feel the, um, whenever there is some traumatizing experience that went, that happened to the specific community, don't, don't be ashamed. Don't feel any fear to bring that up. And it then shows some empathy, right? 
like uh, what happened in, in the US with the Black Lives Matter movement and like across the world as well. And also if there is something that's really triggering for a specific community, bring that up and then normalize this conversation and show to your colleague, show, show to this member that you see them, you see that part of them that most likely everyone tries to shut down, but you see and then you support their pain, right? It's, I'm not talking about positive, uh, toxic positivity. No, like everything's going to be better, you know, like, ah, you know, it, it's really about showing empathy yeah. and sharing the pain. Knowing that you can openly discuss the worries that you have, even at work, is really reassuring. Yeah. Have that safe space. Because like you yeah. say, you know, sometimes you can feel quite lonely and quite trapped. Um, so just trying to create communities for each minority in the organization. What if your company doesn't have a support system, an internal support system? What advice could you give here? So let's say that you have like, yeah, it's a very small company, 15 people. And let's say that there are only two women. And then like there is a traumatizing experience for, a, for the woman in that, that country. Uh, unfortunately, I can, I can, I can pick like many in Brazil and I, 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 I really feel sorry for that. And I sometimes I really need to bring that up because sometimes it, it's here and then you don't feel well, like you have to speak it out, do that. It's very powerful, I believe. Um, so it, then that you can do in any kind of size of company. And then also I said in the end, but actually you can do that even if you have a colleague, I, I think that you can definitely you don't need to be their manager. You can definitely have a, this like a conversation, having a coffee, you know, uh, and then bring that up that they feel sorry for that. And then they share the pain. Mm -hmm. So this is quite, uh, this is quite powerful. I think that COVID brought also this aspect, like this was the year that we had many, many opportunities to, to bring very painful aspects of life, right? Parents having to like at the same time taking care of the, the kids, yeah. making sure that they are like a watching, like they're part of the remote school, and at the same time working. And so this this has been a very tough year. And that's like these are many, many opportunities that we have had uh, to show that empathy and then to share the pain. Definitely. And with the remote working, how have you pushed and worked to ensure your team's well-being mental well-being how have you been checking in on them yeah yeah like uh constantly like every every uh every week uh i try to check on on them and then positive support in the sense that i constantly say like hey if you don't feel good today take some time off to to put yourself together, Kobe, like work, you know, all this convers all this like a situation we are going through right now, it's very tough for different people because of different factors. And I, I do this like constantly check one to one with them, like checking in. Also, remember about the joys of life <laughs> when when they when they're like having like anniversary in the company, please send something. You can send like a rose, whatever. You can send chocolate. Speakers also helps a lot. Even like a handwriting things, just like a message to reassure that we are all together and then we are part of the same team, the same organization, and then we are, we are sharing this experience together. It's the little things in life, I feel. Like the smallest things can make the biggest impact yeah. on someone's day in a positive way i think that we are all in the same boat like we are all trying you know different things here and there um but like uh, i i think that don't also don't underestimate the power of like the remote socialized events i think that you can do very powerful things on the belonging side with a social so try to the same thing that you have recurrent a retros recurrently stand-ups whatever try like i think it's very important to have uh, recurrent social times as well and even small things just like uh, oh games you know bingo or sharing and talking like about oh this is the like everyone shares a picture of of the holidays or uh of the weekend something and talk more about that a lot about this belonging a lot about this identity of a team comes when when we're open to share, when we want to know more about each other, right? And we can do that remote. Unfortunately, 
of course, face to face is the best one. But what we have now, like we have to work with that. And I didn't, don't, don't underestimate, don't, don't like, um, I, I suggest that don't throw away this opportunity just because it's remote. No, you can do good things also being remote. You can work on the social aspect. You can work on creating the binding and keeping this team strong and together. There's so many different things you can do. I've heard of like virtual escape rooms as well. Done one we did before. once. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Have you heard of Gather? Well, it's like a platform, an online platform called Gather. No, 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 no. Like, uh, which one is that? At the Women in Data Science Stockholm Virtual Conference, they used a platform called Gather after the event. And effectively, it's a chance for you to network as if you were at the event. So you have your own avatar and um, there's different sections in this virtual, I guess, conference that they've created and other people's avatars as well. When you come close to an avatar, both your videos come on and both your mic. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. It's a really great way as well to have that networking aspect. And I've heard of one company made a virtual replica of their office. And uh, they've done a lot of oh, wow. okay. virtual social events through this gather as well to keep that engagement. Whenever there is an op like a new tool, I think that we should really go for that and try it out because those are new ways to explore different realities and different perspectives. And then, then I truly believe that there is no right or wrong. We are going to discover all of that on our journey together. It's very much learn by doing, right? Because let's be honest, yeah. no one's faced yeah. the pandemic quite like this. Exactly. It so um, just being innovative, thinking outside the box, trying new things yeah. is yeah. really important. And actually ask your team, what do you want to do? What ideas do you Definitely. want? Definitely. How can we interact? That's an important one as well. Speak to the group. Yeah. Trust. So even like the social events, I don't like to take care of them in the sense that I don't want to drive them. I always ask the team, hey, we're like, we, uh, the only thing that I, I make sure is to have this lot every two weeks or every week. And then to make sure that they have time and, and space for that. Thank you again for sharing, Raul. Also, I know you sat in on a really interesting diversity and inclusion event internally in 2019. I know you yeah. um, And you had a really good presentation. What advice can you share for educating yourself on diversity, inclusion, and belonging topics? People who want to immerse themselves more into this, how can they educate? What resources could you recommend or communities that have positively impacted your learning curve? There are many things to learn here. And first of all, accept the fact that you're going to learn and you're going to fail. But then I hope that from the fail, remember that you know better, you do better, right? It's a constant learning journey. Nobody here knows everything. Remember that, like open, uh, be humble to accept that, that yeah. we are all here learning. So, and of course, like knowing that you want to learn is a very good step too. So I would recommend starting with the allyship journey, I would say, because it opened your eyes to, hey, there are like people around me that needs my help. And how you can, you know, how you can interact with those communities and then learn from them and help them in a very positive way. So I, I would definitely recommend take a look on the allyship journey and you can definitely find a lot of podcasts. You can just like type allyship journey at Spotify. You find like a podcast around there. Um, so if you're part of the one community, I would say don't think that you know everything already. <laughs> no. No, not at all. Like, not at all. Um, so I'm, I'm like, I said, like a gay man, but I didn't know, and still don't know so much about the trans identity. And like, I told myself, like, no, I, I, I also had these uh, goals for myself every year. I try to jump in and understand a better a community every year. So like uh, women, right? I constantly read about women in tech because like, uh, not only because of like only women, but other groups, you were going to have uh, colleagues of yours that are part of those communities as well. So I need to also understand their journey, their life experiences. Yeah. So yeah, definitely, if you're part of an open community, still look for learning about other communities. That's definitely very, very important too. 
You touched the point of communities where I suggest you to talk to a member of a community if you want to learn more about it. So there was a very, very uh, amazing case in my previous teams that I was uh, at Spotify was with uh, working the same team of like a black Muslim woman. And then I was the, the gay, like a gay man there in the team, right? And then she came to me and then I, the, the same time I was working with her, I, I, I read a book called American Islamophobia. And uh, she was part of the, the book club that I mentioned before. So we learned, I learned a lot about the Muslim community through that book too, the struggles that they go through. And then we started to have conversations about that. But also it started that she also, she was asking my experiences in life as a gay man, right? And then it was this very amazing experience of exchanging experiences and understanding much more like uh, of like each of us are going through mm. in tech, in life, in different spaces, right? So, um, so like definitely reaching out to members of communities and have like a very open, humble dialogue about what are their struggles and a uh, tip one is never question their struggles don't you know like oh but um uh, i had this discussion once like in previous jobs about some some male colleagues not recognizing that they were being too harsh on like a female colleague that was submitting a piece of code right and uh, they were questioning that no then they don't go through that it's like we are always all good but then I was asking, like, have you asked them? Have you asked to, to these female colleagues about it? Yeah, she said that she's, she's bad, but I don't think that's a good, it's a bad thing. And it's like, so do not ever question someone's experience because that's true. Like you're not on their, uh, you're not on their scheme to, to judge them. So uh, I think that's like very helpful as well. That's super helpful. And I want to make it clear as well, when it comes to DI and B topics, you do not have to be an expert to talk about mm, it. Yeah. As long as you've got a passion to want to make some kind of change, that's good enough to get involved, mm. to immerse yourself in the community as well. So don't ever hold yourself back from speaking about it because you're not classed as an expert, because talking yeah. about it is just the first step of even raising awareness. You know, yeah. I think don't hold yourself back as well is a big thing. And I love what you mentioned about the podcasts available on Spotify. There are so many available. I have to say, I spend half of my day on Spotify every day, <laughs> um, especially through lockdown. From your perspective, collectively, what more do you think we can do to attract women in tech? I really like the like when you say collectively, uh, because there is the aspect of women in tech, I mean, industry, right? Uh, and also we should not forget about what comes before that, like universities and, you know, tech schools, uh, schools and, and, and things like that. So as, as I said, like, I, I really, really believe on the power of representation. So of course, like all of that, that I, we have discussed about here, practices of inclusion, belonging, think about it. And uh, as I said, like diversity is one aspect, right? Of course, we want to have like a, a, a good number, like I would say like half, uh, out, like even more than half, half, um, at least half, half like women and men, right? But it's not only about the numbers, you have also to make sure that those women, they feel comfortable being in that company, right? And they feel heard about it. And, and also they are like, not only in the company, but also they are in the leadership positions as well. Uh, there are like some funny anecdotes about numbers of diversity of like companies uh, that they have 50, 50% uh, percent, like half, half. But yeah, like, but all the women are like a personal assistant of the, the big bosses, right? Like of the big managers. So that, that's, that doesn't change the picture. That doesn't improve the picture. You have to have a equitable uh, environment, right? So I, I, and then because of that, like uh, diverse, that's why I'm saying that diversity is connected to belonging because if you have only diversity, you're going in and then you only focus on that, you're going to lose the talent, you're going to lose those people. Um, 
they're going to leave the company because if you don't think about the belonging aspect. And, uh, and like I said, like uh, women in leadership, of, of course, this is very inspiring. Of course, uh, as I said before, we all want to see people that look like us in top like uh, positions and then inspiring younger people to do more and then, you know, to follow on their, their dreams and then to believe that they are able to do that. So having those people in the industry, of course, it's important so that we can attract more, hopefully you can attract more people, uh, like more young girls to, to schools, you know, to universities, to, to engage on engineering, on computer science lectures and, and everything. Mm -hmm. If you can, please participate on hackathons, you know, of events that are organized for girls, uh, like uh, be a volunteer there. There are like a lot of institutions about that break down those stereotypes and then talk about it, talk about it and then challenge. I, I don't see that maybe because I'm, I'm Brazilian, so I, I have a lot of these conversations in Brazil and like I challenge people a lot there. So try to do the same here, wherever you are, challenge that like, no, like women, women can do whatever they want. It's not only, you know, humanities or, or medical field, like whatever, like whatever they want. Thank you again for sharing, Rob. It's so valuable and powerful, the insights you're sharing. And so many people are going to learn a lot from you today. So it's been a real pleasure speaking. Outside of some of the names you've mentioned so far, can you share any other influential people who have inspired you personally to do better within the world of diversity, inclusion, belonging? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so that is one. Um, I have like four names, uh, as uh, I, I mentioned already, Kenji Yoshino. Uh, oh, by the way, all of these people are LinkedIn and then, then I follow them in LinkedIn. You can also do the same. You can read a lot of their content or their creation there. So Kenji Yoshino was the one that presented me the, the, the allyship for, for all. It was very inspiring. Lovet Jalo. She, she's very uh, active here in like Sweden. She has won many, many prizes in human rights. She, she, she brings a very interesting perspective of the races in the European context mm. and then that workplace, uh, especially in Sweden. Also Lili Zeng, I read some of her content yeah. and she gives, she brings a very interesting perspective of business and the DIB. So she always tried to, like the thing that I talked about, the business case of the the I and B, it's from her. Yeah. And then you can you can also hear more about uh, about those. So she brings a very interesting perspective of business and the D I and B. And Cassie Mackey, I had the pleasure to work with him. He's a Brazilian as well. Cassie, he really changed my perspective of D I and B. He, I, I learned a lot from him. I'm, I'm like. A, I wouldn't be here without him. Like I think that he gave me a lot of tools. He gave me, uh, we had very interesting conversation about the topic in industry. Uh, and then I'm, he also have, has very good content in, uh, con, uh, content in LinkedIn. So I also recommend you to follow. Uh, but yeah, uh, those are the top four in my mind. Great recommendations. Everyone reach out, follow, because you learn from content as well, right? If yeah. you follow these advocates on these topics and you constantly see content on your timeline, that as well is another way to educate yourself, to yeah. get that one step further, to become an ally. It's constant reminder. Yeah. Great, great recommendations, Ro. And finally, what is the single greatest piece of advice that you can share? when it comes to diversity, inclusion, and of course, belonging? First, like, as an NEM, I can like my tip of most important one is you are responsible for the well-being of every single person in your team. And DIB, it's very, very related to that. So I think that we as EMs, we have to know about it. You have to read. You don't have to be an expert, uh, expert as we talked, but you have to be aware of, of that mm. because this is very connected to the well-being of, of the people in our organization. Uh, and uh, yeah, as like a, just like an employee in tech, <laughs> I, I would say that uh, I like 
I like this sentence of, uh, that's why, what I usually also say, like why we have to work as teams, because if you, if you work alone, you go faster, but if you work together, we go further, right? Yeah. That's the same with the aspect of the INB. The INB puts us together. And like uh, when we feel part of the same togetherness, we go much further together, uh, right? So yeah. this, I, I think that's the INB. I understand the business case behind it, like as we talked about it, but there's also this aspect of togetherness and then be able to, to walk much further and then to achieve much more with the benefits of the NB in your organization. If I have time, I would like to promote. We are also hiring at Spotify. And uh, please, uh, if you have any, we have like a lot of jobs. So please go to Spotify uh, jobs, the portal. And if you have any question about uh, the positions, please ping me in LinkedIn. Check out the website if that's something that you're interested in doing yeah. as well. And bro, if some people are keen to get more involved in allyship, are you happy for them to reach out to you, get connected through LinkedIn and maybe ask? Yeah, 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 sure. Maybe. Sure. Perfect. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Is there anything else you'd like to share? No, like just like thank you very much too for this uh, conversation, uh, for inviting me and organizing this. It has been very, very interesting.